Ephesians chapter number four, beginning with verse 25 from the ESV version of the Bible. Therefore, having put away falsehood, My God. letting each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are all members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, Amen. but rather let him labor, mm -hmm. doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Mm -hmm. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, to the heart, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments, on this youth Sunday, I want to talk to you from the subject, Catalyst of transformation. Ah. Catalyst of transformation. Right. Minister Training Reading, according to current statistics, domestic violence remains a serious issue in the United States. <laughs> Approximately one in four women and one in nine men experience domestic violence from someone they are closely acquainted to. This violence that is experienced can be physical violence. It can come in the form of verbal attacks there's also sexual abuse, and it can present itself in the form of stalking. I want us to understand that nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by someone they are closely acquainted to. And in this country, when we look at it holistically, it equates to more than 10 million men and women experiencing domestic violence every year. Amen. We do understand that the majority of those experiencing domestic violence are women and they make up 85% of the reported domestic violence cases yearly. Uh -huh. Amen. Furthermore, we understand that children are affected by domestic violence. Amen. They can be victims of domestic violence or witnesses of domestic violence. I want us to grasp the fact that children, our babies, who 
experience domestic violence in the home or any or any place or more like are more likely to experience the long-term negative effects Amen. of being abused or witnessing abuse. The long-term abuse children or children exposed to the abuse suffer from mental health issues. All right. Behavioral problems. And I want you to check this out. Either they become per the perpetrator. All right. All right now. Uh. Or they become the victim of domestic violence themselves. Amen. Uh. My brothers and my sisters, as disciples, we have been called out and called forth to bring to bring light to a dark land. Amen. And this light brings forth change in our families. Yeah. It brings forth change in the church. Yeah. And it brings forth change in our communities. All right. We have to understand that domestic violence affects individuals regardless of their age. Amen. Regardless of their socioeconomic status. Regardless of race, ethnicity, or educational background. Let's take it a step further. So we understand the magnitude of this problem. Approximately, I want y'all to get this in your spirits. Approximately half of all female homicide victims. All right. In this country, that means they've been murdered. That means that the life force that was within them was taken from them. All right. Half of the female murder victims in the United States are killed due to domestic violence. <laughs> I want us to clearly understand that many folk, they don't like to talk about domestic violence. All right. They don't want to talk about the problems that come from domestic violence. And we have to understand that most cases of domestic violence go unreported. All right. Why does it go unreported? Because many victims fear retaliation. All right. They fear being mocked or crucified socially. They fear of having a lack of support from family, friends, and even the church. All right. However, my brothers and my sisters, as the church of Jesus Christ, we need to take a permanent stand against domestic violence. We must stand against domestic violence. Amen. Even when we see our loved ones perpetrating it. All right. Amen, Pastor Amen. Bolton. I'm doing the best I can. As a church, we must come against senseless murders of our brothers and our sisters. Yeah. As the church, we must make a greater effort to protect our children. Amen. So they don't grow up to have behavioral issues and unnecessary mental issues. As a church, we must become more invested in the word and what God is calling us to do. And we must stop minimizing behavioral problems and mental health issues in our churches and in our communities. 
So on today, as we are here as catalysts of transformation against domestic violence, we declare on today that we're no longer going to stand by and do nothing. But we're going to stand on the solid rock and we're going to build our hopes on things eternal as we do something about the issues that lead to domestic violence All right. and the issue of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Tasha Cobb said there's power in the name of Jesus. And I hear the change falling. There's power in the name of Jesus Amen. and the change are being broken. Understand my brothers and my sisters, the chains of domestic violence are being broken in our homes. Amen. The chains Amen. of domestic violence are being broken in our families. The chains of domestic violence are being broken in Central Iceland because there's an army of believers. They're rising up. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. In our text, Paul, the apostle, is letting the church of Ephesus know in a direct way that the old way has to go. HMBC, if you don't know, now you know. The whole way, gotta get up out of here. Mm -hmm. See, understand, we cannot move forward in God with the thinking, mm -hmm. the attitude, and the ways that we felt benefited us when we were dead in our sins. All right. And Paul, he lets the church of Ephesus know that as believers, we are taking our direction from Christ. And we understand that Christ is our everything. See, Reverend Ernest Davis Jr. and the Wilmington Chester Mass Choir, they let us know that Jesus Christ is all. He's everything to me. Yes, Christ is all. See, he rules the land and he rules the sea. Yes, Christ is all. Without him, nothing would be my joy and sorrow, my hope for tomorrow. He's everything to me. He's food on my table. And to me, see, I know he's able. He is everything to me. Amen. See, my brothers and my sisters, when we understand that Christ is everything, we will simply have no desire to go along with the ways Amen. of the world. Because we know without a doubt the world is not heading in the direction of holiness. It's not trying to be righteous. And the world has no conscience when it comes to sinful living. So Paul is telling the church of Ephesus that we no longer follow the mindset nor the agenda All right, now. created by the world. Right, come on. The church, Brother Arthur, should not be following the mindset of the world. All right. Nor should we be trying to pattern what we do in church yes. according to the agenda of the world. Yes. Paul, as the church of Ephesus, know, and he lets us know when you read the text. We don't have an excuse for ignorance in this matter. Because it is Paul's assumption that the believer 
the disciple, the mentor, and the church have paid close attention to Christ. Yeah. Reverend Slater, that's what we're here for, right? Amen. We are here to pay attention to Jesus Christ. True. Let me break it down a little further. And Deacon Woods, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We got Bible class. Amen. Amen. Sunday school. Amen. On Tuesday and Thursday, we have prayer cards. Multiple prayer cards. And in these ministry events, we are instructed about the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. So due to this instruction, due to this equipping, mm -hmm. we can testify at the church and it's by design mm -hmm. that we have on a regular basis mm -hmm. learned the truth about Christ. Amen. Hope Missionary Baptist Church has no excuse. Yes. And because we have learned the truth about Christ, we understand that sinful, corrupt, and the carnal ways of the world must be cast aside. Amen. This means no more Attempting to make something appear true. That's not true. We are to deal with one another honestly. Yeah. And with an attitude that is fueled by unconditional love. Amen. Amen. Glory. Furthermore, Dr. Cobb. We must understand that we are the body of Christ. We are connected to Christ. Right? All right. And because we are a body, we're connected to one another. Amen. So if we end up mistreating one another, We mistreat the body. Praise the Lord. Which means we mistreat ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we bring awareness to domestic violence, or today we understand that the wrong has no place in the church. Amen. But Paul states. In verse 26 and 27, go ahead and be angry. But do you do well to be angry, but don't use your anger to fuel your revenge. Be angry and sin not. And also it goes on to say to the church, don't stay angry. All right. If Teddy Pendergrass was here, he said, you got to let it go. <laughs> Don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Furthermore, Paul instructs the church to watch what you say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't grieve God. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And don't take the gift of the Holy Spirit for granted. Mm -hmm. I know. I as believers that are connected to Christ and as believers who are connected to one another, we are to make a clean break from the old way. Yes, yes. And we must strive to mature 
in the holiness of Almighty God. Yes. And we should do our best as those who are connected to Christ and connected to one another to simply in all aspects of our interaction with one another be gentle in our engagements. Amen. Be sensitive in our approach and interactions with one another. And we should be willing to forgive one another quickly. Amen. Hold on. And thoroughly. Say quickly and thoroughly. Just like Christ has forgiven us. Tell your neighbor the whole way has to go. So how can believers effectively come against domestic violence while following Christ's example? Number one, as change agents, we must approach one another with Christ as our focus. Mm -hmm. Not only must we have Christ as our focus, we have to have godly affection and consideration for one another. And we must do all of this even in the midst of our differences. We have differences of culture and differences of character, and we also have difference of opinion. Amen. Let us do our best to reconcile our differences peacefully and not divide rambunctiously. Point number two, as change agents, we must be compassionate and caring towards each other. Yes. We must be compassionate and caring even when we don't see eye to eye. All right. We have to be compassionate and caring when we're agitated. But all the while, we should be seeking to dwell together in unity. Realistically, and I got this from Deacon Simpson, it's not about being on one accord. It's about serving on God's accord. Amen. Amen. Number three, as change agents, seeking to heal a community that's been affected by domestic violence, we must teach the truth about God. We must preach the gospel, but we must be prepared for opposition. We must be prepared for misunderstandings. We must be prepared for false rumors, and we must be prepared for the threats of retaliation and violence on our lives. Amen. And even in the midst of being persecuted, we must remember that God forgave us. So we should extend Forgiveness to the ones seeking to persecute us. Amen. With all that said, as we strive to eliminate the practice of domestic violence in the United States and throughout the world, my brothers and my sisters, we must acknowledge that Jesus is love. And the extension of his love doesn't hurt. As we strive to eliminate shame and the pain caused by domestic violence, we must declare boldly in the land of the shadow of death that Jesus is love and the extension of his love 
it does not hurt. As we do our best to be change agents and strive to live righteously in a dying world, we realize that we must live like Jesus and his love, it does not hurt. The songwriter said, I was alone in I. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying, HMBC, there's work to do. My brothers and my sisters, when it comes to being catalyst of transformation, we must acknowledge that there is work to do. While trying to be agents of change, we must confess that there is work to do. When it comes, because, when it comes to being people that, have, that are pushing a nation to be right with God, we must live like there is work to do. When it comes to being mature believers and the land filled with gloom and filled with doom, we must apprehend and comprehend that there is work to do. We will no longer stand by doing nothing while the abused suffer in silence. HMBC, we must acknowledge that there is work to do. All we got to do is take the master's hand and join the Christian man because we are on the battlefield for our Lord. If we're going to stand firm as we engage the battle against domestic violence, we must be standing on the solid rock. If we're going to declare, for Christ I live and for Christ I die, we must be standing on the solid rock. If we're going to be light in the midst of the darkness, we must be standing on the solid rock. There must be a revival in the church so there can be transition in the land. My brothers and my sisters, we must be standing on the solid rock. We have to stop worrying about who sees us and who doesn't see us. We have to stop competing against one another. We must be standing and we must be serving on the solid rock. We have to live morally. We have to love unconditionally. We have to interact righteously. We must be standing on the solid rock. The solid rock is Jesus, God's only begotten son. The solid rock is Jesus, my brothers and my sisters. He is the only one. Yeah. See, when everything else fails, I can go to the rock. Yeah. When trouble is all around me, yeah. I can go to the rock. Yeah. See, God promised yes. that he would keep me yeah. if I abide in his holy word. Yeah. No matter what the problem is, I can go to the rock. A-M-E-C. You can go to the rock. See, when I'm sick, I find my healing at the stone that the builders rejected. When I get lost and can't find my way, my navigation comes from the stone that the builders rejected. When I find myself all alone and by myself, thinking great my company comes from the stone that the builders rejected. When I need understanding and when I need to be equipped, my teaching comes from the stone that the builders rejected. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. Righteousness of the living God fall fresh on us. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Fall fresh on us. The songwriter said, Sweet Holy Spirit. Sweet Heavenly Dove. I need you to stay right here with us. Filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts 
in praise. And with a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Do I got five folks up in here that are going to stand against domestic violence? See, God has not given us the spirit of fear. We can stand against domestic violence. So how can believers effectively combat domestic violence while following Christ's example? Number one, as change agents, we must approach one another with Christ as our focus. Number two, as change agents, we must be compassionate and caring for one another in every situation. And last but not least, as change agents, seeking to heal a community affected by domestic violence, we must teach the truth about God. And we must preach the gospel. Amen. But we have to be prepared for the opposition. We have to be prepared for the misunderstandings. Be prepared for the false rumors. And be prepared for the threats of retaliation and violence. Amen. Hymn number 123. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There's a sweet expression for his face. And I know you feel the presence of the Lord. The door to the church.